Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 9.6, analyzing functions with successive differences. We are going to be working with three functions today, and those functions are linear function, the quadratic function, and exponential function. Starting with the linear function, what does that look like? Remembering back to last year where we had y equals mx plus b, where m was your slope and b was your y-intercept, that is the linear function. The quadratic function is what we've been working with with all of chapter 9. And what did that look like? That always had a square in it. And then the exponential function, which we haven't touched on too much this year, but you did have it last year, where it was y equals a times b to the x. Now, what does the linear function look like? Right here is the key line. Where is the function with the line or the graph of the line? It is right here. The graph is the blue line. The quadratic function makes what kind of shape? It makes a U. It is a parabola. And then finally, the exponential function starts off small and gets really big. I also should state here with this exponential function that B is greater than zero and it's going to get big really fast. So what do these problems look like? Well, in number one, we're going to use the graph to tell whether the function or tell what function the ordered pairs represent. So here are our ordered pairs, and we're going to start by putting them in a table, in an x, y table. I know it's everybody's favorite way to graph. So here I'm going to say this is, or this is rather, my x value, and this is my y value. Here's my x. Here's my y. First coordinate is your x, second coordinate is your y. So I'm going to put this in the table. So it's going to be 1 over 32 for my y. Then it's going to be negative 2 and 1 8, 0 and 1 half, 2 and 2, 4 and 8. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these values on my table. So I have negative 4. 132, so I'm going to go over 1, 2, 3, 4, and then up ever so slightly. And now I have negative 2 and 1 8, so I'm going to go over negative 2 and up 1 8, so up slightly just a little bit more. 0 and 1 half, so I'm going to stay right at 0, put that right smack dab in the middle. Then go over 2, up 2, right there. And then 4, 8, so I'm going to go over 4 first, and then up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and put my point. Now I have all my points down there. Can I go ahead and graph this? So I'm going to go slowly at first, just with the dotted line. You can speed it up with a solid line, but what is this graph looking like from the previous slide? This graph is looking like a graph of an exponential function. This graph is a exponential function. Let's try another one. We're asked to graph these guys and see what it looks like. So again, make an xy table, xy, remembering that the first coordinate is your x, the second coordinate is your y, so it's negative 4, 1. Then we have negative 2, 2, 0, 3, 2, and 4, 4, and 5. Now, we're going to graph this, negative 4, 1, so I go over 1, 2, 3, 4, and then I'm going to go up 1, and then negative 2, 2. So I go over negative 2, up 2, then 0, 3. So I'm staying at 0, up 3, then 2, 4, going over 2, up 4, and 4, 5. Go over 4, up 5. Now what does this look like if I start connecting them with a line? Whoop, I missed some of my points. Now, what does this line look like? I didn't do a very good job of it, but does this give us a better idea? It is a straight line. So a graph of a straight line is a linear function. And then one more. Now I'm not going to use the table. I'm just going to go straight from the coordinate points. So we have negative 4, 5. So it's going to go over 1, 2, 3, 4, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Put a point. Negative 2, 2. So I go over negative 2, up positive 2. 0, 1, so staying at 0, go up 1. Then 2, positive 2, up 2. Put a point. Over 4, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and put a point. What does this look like? If I can get a little bit better at connecting the dots, you will see that we have a 
what? A parabola, a U-shaped graph, and that graph belongs to a quadratic function. Now a couple more examples here. Now we are going to use the table to tell what function we are representing, and then we're going to write that equation. So first thing that we're going to use, we're going to use successive differences. And what that means is that we are going to use the y's. First thing we have to do though is check, do our x's go by 1's? Yes they do, or do they go by a constant amount? It, here it goes by 1, so we're good. Next thing we're going to do, how do we go from 2 to 0 0.5? We would have to do, or we would have to use subtraction, right? So we're going to subtract 1.5 to get there. Now how do we go from 0.5 to 0? Well it's going to be a negative 5. Now 0 to 0 0.5, that's going to add 0 0.5, and this should be a point back here. And now what are we going to do to get here to there? We're going to add 1.5. Now if you don't like that way and the numbers get pretty big, we don't know what to use, we can also go ahead and subtract. Well how do I go from 2 to 0.5? It would be 2 minus 0.5, which gives me 1.5, and then I took away that 1.5, right, moving forward, or here you would go 0 minus 0 0.5 and get 0.5. Here we added it, right, we went back, so it would be plus 0.5. Now, here's the first differences. That is the first difference, difference right here. These are the first differences, known as the first differences. Right now, they do not tell us anything. But, what if we keep going with it? How do I go from negative 1.5 to negative 5? Well, I just add 1. How do I go from negative 0.5 to positive 0.5? I would add 1. And how about 0.5 to 1.5? I would add 1. Now, notice that these numbers are all the same. These numbers are all the same, uh, tell us that we have to use the quadratic function. So we're going to use the quadratic function, and these numbers are known as the second difference. Now we are asked to write an equation. So now we're going to write an equation for this table. When we write a graph of a quadratic function, so this is a quadratic, quadratic function, we're going to use just this part of the function. Now, we're going to pick any values from this table, and I'm going to pick negative 2 and 2. I'm going to pick these two, or this point right there. I have an x and a y, yes? So I'm going to plug this x and this y in for right here. So my y was a positive 2. That equals, I do not know my, what, what my a was. My x is negative 2, and I'm going to square that. I'm going to solve for a right now. So 2 equals a, and then negative 2 squared is 4. Now, how is this 4 attached to a? Through multiplication. How do you undo multiplication? So you are going to divide both sides by 4. So a equals 1 half. Now, a equals 1 half. We're going to plug it back in. So all that's left is x and y's. So here we go. We have y equals 1 half x squared. Notice how I have my y and my x still in here. And that is your answer. Could you check this? Absolutely. You could use another point. You could use negative 1, and you would plug negative 1 in and see if it gives you a positive 0 0.05. Let's try some more. With number 5, the first thing I'm going to do is check my successive differences. So here, I'm adding 2. 4 to 8, I add 4. From 8 to 16, I add 8. From 16 to 32, I add 16. Well now, let's check the second differences, see if they're any different. I, 2 to 4, I add 2. 4 to 8, I add 4. 8 to 16, I add 8. So my second differences don't do me any good, so that didn't work. 
Well, let's try another trick up our sleeve. Let's go backwards. Let's go 4 to 2. How can I get from 4 to 2? Well, let's try dividing. 4 divided by 2 gives me 2. Well, that's interesting. How about 8 to 4? 8 divided by 4 gives me 2. Interesting. Six, let's go 16 and 8. 16 divided by 8 gives me 2. All right, how about 32 divided by 16 gives me 2. Notice what all my values are. They are all 2. So now when we have a common ratio, when we can divide the second one by the first one and get a common ratio, we're going to have an exponential function, a function that looks like this. Now, to write the equation for this, when we have our common ratio, that is going to be my b. So now I'm going to rewrite this as y equals a, and then I'm plugging in that 2 for b. And now, again, I'm just going to pick a point. I'm going to pick, let's go with 1 16. And so I'm going to plug 1 in for my x, 16 in my, for my y. So I have 16 equals a 2 times 1's going in for x. 16 equals a times 2. This 2 is attached through multiplication. So what I have to do, I have to divide by 2. Divide by 2. So a now equals 8. Now I have an a, I have a b, so I'm just going to plug everything in. y equals 8 times 2 to the x, and that is my exponential equation. Now, number 6, let's try it again, starting with successive differences. Here I am adding 2, here I am adding 2, here I am adding 2, and here I am adding 2. So now when the first differences are the same, it is going to be a linear function. So, how do I find the linear function? Here we go, y equals, now my m is a rate of change, right? And how am I changing to go to each, each coordinate? I am adding 2, so that is going to go in for my m. The x stays the same. For my b, what is my b? My b is my y-intercept. Well, we have to find where x is 0. x is 0 will give me my y-intercept only when your x is 0. So now my b will be negative 1. And so my equation or my function for the linear function is y equals 2x minus 1. Let's go over a little review just to see what graph we have when this happens. Well, we get the quadratic function when the second difference is the same. We get the exponential function when we have a common ratio between our y values that's when we use division. I'm going to put that down here, and I would write that down too. Use division. So when we have to use division, it is an exponential function. And then we have a linear function when the first difference is the same. And that does it for section 9.6, analyzing functions with successive differences. Good day.